Hey guys, it's Neil again from Heart of Texas Armory, and today I want to bring you guys a review on one of the most unique and rare dive watches in my collection. So join me today and find out my complete thoughts on this Yima Sea Spider. Taking a look at the specs here of the Yima Sea Spider, you'll probably see that it has a really nice universal size here in regards to dimensions. The case diameter is 42 millimeters, which is a really nice size that's gonna fit a wide variety of wrist sizes. My wrist size here is six and seven eighths inches, and you can see that this watch here wears beautifully on my wrist. The lug to lug distance here is 45 millimeters, which is fairly compact. So this watch is really more of a cushion watch shape. So even with that 42 millimeter case diameter, to me, it wears slightly smaller than that, probably more like a 41 millimeter. Lug width here for straps and band changes, you're looking at 20 millimeters, so excellent size on that. Case thickness here is also very thin, so we're looking at only 12.8 millimeters. And the reason why this case diameter is so thin is because this watch sports a quartz kinetic movement inside. And the weight on this watch is 138 grams as it sits set up for my wrist size. So it does have a nice feel on the wrist. I'm a big fan of watches that are under 150 grams. Anything over that to me is just a bit too heavy. So this watch here at 138 grams is just about right. A couple other highlights here are the specs. So we do have a hard lex crystal here. The water resistance is also very nice. So this is a 200 meter water resistant watch. Although this is a vintage watch being produced about 20 years ago now in the early 2000s. So if you do pick one of these up, you may want to check the seals and gasket and possibly replace them if need be to maintain that 200 meters of water resistance. So this Sea Spider here does have some interesting history to it in my opinion. I know a lot of you guys are probably familiar with Yima. Yima is a very well known and respected French watchmaking company and they're actually still in operation and they're producing some pretty nice watches. So if you haven't heard of them or looked at their lineup recently, I do suggest you go check them out. But this watch here is unique because there was a time when Yima was in some financial trouble and believe it or not, Seiko actually swooped in and purchased Yima. And Seiko was in control of Yima from 1988 until 2004. And this watch here, this Yima Sea Spider, of course was produced during that time period. So in all intents and purposes, this is a Seiko watch because all of the Yima watches that were produced when Seiko was in control of the company were manufactured in-house at the Seiko facilities in Japan. So this Sea Spider will feel a lot like a lot of the early 2000s Seiko dive watches. So to me, that's actually a good thing. But I wanted to mention that to you guys because this watch does have a bit of unique history. Now, this watch is also quite rare. I've never really even seen another model of this watch in the wild. I was able to find this one on eBay and I'm not sure the actual production numbers of these watches, but if I had to guess, I would think that the actual numbers produced were not that high. And there were actually three different varieties of the Sea Spider that were produced by Seiko. So, of course, this one here, the kinetic version, is one version. They had a quartz version, which ran off of a standard battery. And then finally, they have a automatic version. All of them are very similar looking. You can see those on the screen right now. So they all share a bit of design characteristics, but they do all look slightly unique from each other. And the last thing I'll mention here about the Seiko produced Yima watches is that Seiko actually treated the Yima lineup as more of a high-end production line of watches. So pretty much any of the Yima watches you might come across that were produced during the time that Seiko was in control of the company, they're all going to be pretty high quality. So taking a look at the design here of the Yima Sea Spider, I think it's a very interesting and unique watch. So first off, this is a Seiko Kinetic watch. So what that means is that this watch here, of course, is a quartz watch, but it's actually powered by an internal rechargeable lithium ion battery or capacitor. In this case here, this one has the lithium ion battery. And that battery is actually charged by moving the watch around. There's a micro rotor inside that spins around that actually gives power to the battery. So kinetic watches, of course, are quartz watches, but you really don't have to worry about changing the battery out. The lithium ion batteries can last up to 15 to 20 years. So this watch here, just with normal wear, will recharge on its own. And when it's fully charged, you can get up to four to six months of battery life. So very impressive battery life out of these Seiko kinetic movements. This movement here is a 5M42 movement. There are different varieties of Seiko kinetic movements out there, but this one here is one of the more common common ones and and this variety was produced in the late 90s up until the early 2000s 
You guys probably know that I like quartz watches, so being a kinetic quartz to me is a win-win because one, you get the reliability and the accuracy of quartz, but you don't have to change out the battery very often because of that lithium ion battery and the ability to recharge it with the kinetic rotor. The dial on this watch is very beautiful in my opinion. You can see that it has kind of a black granite look to it, which I think is very beautiful. When you're able to get it out into some bright sunlight like you're seeing now, the dial is very mesmerizing and very beautiful. Kind of reminds me of my Seiko Grey Ghost, if you guys saw the video review I did on that watch. But this one here is not quite so apparent being black. So when you see it, a lot of the times, it's just gonna look like a black dial. But when you bring it up close and you can see the detail, or when you look at it in bright daylight, the dial is simply spectacular. I'm a big fan of the overall design of the dial layout here. So everything from the indices which are applied and filled with Seiko Lumabrite to the really cool handset here. I think everything is very well done. I'll also mention I do like the frame date window here at the 3 o'clock position. And the font choice that they used on this particular watch is really cool in my opinion. I really like how that Yima Sea Spider looks on the dial. And then down here at the six o'clock as well, and I like the red 200 meters of water resistance right there on the dial. And that touch of red also ties into the internal bezel here, which is a compass dial. You can see the red on the north, east, south, and west. So you do get a full stainless steel dive bezel with this watch, and it is a 120 click unidirectional bezel. The feel here is pretty typical of most Seiko dive watches from this time period, so it's not going to be the most ratchety feeling bezel out there, but it does turn smoothly and the bezel feel is just fine in my opinion, and to me the feel is going to be very similar to a early 2000s Seiko SKX. So two other unique design features here I'd like to talk about are first the kinetic button here which is right there at the 2 o'clock position and then finally here down at the 4 o'clock position the crown that operates the internal compass bezel. So the purpose of the top button is to let you know how much power reserve you have in either the capacitor or the lithium ion battery. So to operate this is very simple. What you want to do is let the seconds hand come around here to the 12 o'clock position, press the button, and then depending on how much power you have in your watch, the seconds hand will sweep forward. So you can see the seconds hand on my watch swept forward here to the 20 second mark. Now if you had a capacitor that was working properly, it would sweep all the way up to the 30 second mark if it's fully charged. But when you replace the capacitors with the new lithium ion batteries when it's fully charged the seconds hand will only sweep to the 20 second mark like mine did so my watch here is fully topped off and like i mentioned before when they're fully charged with the lithium ion batteries you can get up to four to six months of power reserve so the compass bezel is very easy to operate all you need to do is rotate the crown and you can see that the compass bezel will rotate and you can set it however you would need to and I do want to mention that the compass crown here is not screwed down, but this watch still retains its 200 meters of water resistance. So being a full dive watch, this watch here is constructed out of stainless steel. So everything from the bezel, the watch case, to the case back, to the bracelet, they're all constructed from stainless steel. We do have a screw down crown here at the three o'clock position, which is protected by some rather large crown guards. But if you need to change the time or date, you're easily able to do that by unscrewing this crown. Taking a look at the side profile of the Yima Sea Spider, you can see it has a very pleasing design here, and you can see that the lugs actually curve down, so this watch really does wear well, and it actually hugs the wrist nicely, so, so I'm definitely a fan of the aesthetics of this case shape. We do have a stainless steel screw down case back here, and of course, all the relevant information pertaining to this watch is engraved into that case back. The stainless steel bracelet that comes with the Sea Spider is of excellent quality and is very comfortable on wrist, the bracelet articulates beautifully here. You can see it lays flat against the case back, which is always nice to see. We do have a pretty standard dive style clasp here with a safety clasp. Now, this clasp is not milled, so it is of stamped steel, but it does wear beautifully and is very comfortable. The clasp also has a diver's extension, so if you needed to slip this over a wetsuit or something like that, you're able to do that. And one other unique design feature here on this bracelet is that on each side of the bracelet, we do have these machined in spider legs here, which is quite unique. Something I haven't seen before and definitely ties in with that sea spider name. So this watch has quite a few positives going for it. One of my favorite features of this watch is that beautiful black granite dial. It really is unique and is really pretty. I really would like to see more watches come out with a dial similar to this. 
I'm also a big fan of the overall unique design features that this watch has. So it's definitely a unique looking watch and certainly not like anything I have in my collection. This watch also has that internal compass bezel, which is a neat feature and something again that I don't have any other watches that have a similar feature in my collection. So I definitely do enjoy the unique design aspects that this Sea Spider has. Another positive is the loom on this watch. It does have Seiko Lumabrite. So as you can see, even though this watch is almost 20 years old now at this point, the loom is still bright and does last throughout the night. The overall build quality here is also excellent. You know, being a Seiko produced Yima watch, you know it's gonna be high quality. And this watch, when you have it in hand, definitely has a quality feel. And it also wears beautifully on the wrist. And part of that is because of the excellent dimensions that this watch has. I really like the wrist presence that it has, but also that short lug to lug and some other design characteristics like the thin case size here, just make it wear beautifully on the wrist. And I think this watch would wear on pretty much anyone's wrist size. And the last positive here I'll mention is just the kinetic movement inside of this watch. I think it's really cool to have a quartz watch that is powered from the movement of wearing the watch. So similar to an automatic watch, but this one here gives you all the benefits of a quartz movement. So you're going to get a very reliable movement that's not affected by magnetism. And you're also going to get the benefit of the quartz accuracy. As for the negatives, there's not a lot to report actually on this watch, but a few things that I'll mention here. So the clasp, I would have preferred it to be milled obviously, but the stamp works just fine. But the one feature I do wish it had was a push button release. So this one here, you don't have any buttons to actually open the clasp. This one here, you just pop open. Another minor negative here that doesn't really affect me, but if you're very OCD, this watch probably wouldn't be the one for you because as you wear this watch, the internal compass bezel will get moved around periodically just from normal wear because that crown is not screwed down. So you do have to kind of get used to that compass bezel just moving around on its own kind of randomly. So if you're the type of person that likes to have everything just perfectly lined up this watch probably wouldn't be the one to go for and the final minor negative here is that this watch does have a mineral crystal so it's not sapphire so keep that in mind that it will pick up scratches more easily than sapphire but overall this yima sea spider is definitely one of the most unique watches in my collection and it's also one of my favorites it packs a ton of features into a really compact and wearable size here and i just love the overall aesthetics of this watch so if you happen to see one of these watches available online somewhere like eBay or something like that, I definitely suggest you try to purchase one and add it to your collection. It really is a cool timepiece. Guys, if you have any questions or comments on this timepiece, leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Guys, I'll catch you on the next one. Y'all take care.